How you doing guys? Back out in the garage. It's Monday, 102. Okay, just turned on the fans in here to draw some air out. Humidity's down to a little below 70. It says it's 60 in here, I believe that. Beautiful outside. We already went to the beach, that's a different video. This is a video on block sanding, okay? Sat with Roopster, uh yesterday. We talked about block sanding and I told him I would do a little block sanding to demonstrate for him. Uh, this is the way I do it. Good, bad, or indifferent. I also explained to Ruben that there's all levels of sanding. Okay, now this particular time I'm wet sanding the car. I already dry blocked this car once and recoded it. Now, on the other hand, keep in mind, I explained to Ruben that this quarter and door were the first panels I recoded still getting a little used to the gun there is a slight peel to it so it's going to take a little more effort than it took to do the fenders fenders were like were like butter it's a like cake one pass and 50 percent of the what you call it and one light pass 50 percent of the orange peel is gone this is going to require a little more effort so with that i got to keep the pressure off because i don't want to gouge into the panel okay i mask at the lines coming a hair bit over just my new Okay, got the same going on down here. I masked the adjacent panel. In this case, there's no door seal in here, so it is a little pushed in at this point. A little line up. So I'm pretty safe, but while I'm doing this and putting my efforts here, I don't want to think about that. I already did that. And I did it the other way before. Okay, we're just going to do the front part here. I'm not worried about back here right now. Some of the things you need to wet sand or when I wet sand is either you could use a spray bottle full of water, you could use a, an old dishwasher detergent bottle with a little spout and you can run the water on if you really want to go heavy. If you're just doing a basic wet sanding by hand where you're just trying to get the peel off and you're not looking to block it flat, you could do it with a hose. Or you could do it with the hose and do that too, but that's at that point you're probably outside because it's a major mess you could see the floor from the sanding so far this stuff will rinse away getting to that point rubber gloves you are taking this chemical and combining it with water now it will go into your skin and where do you think the chemicals are, chemicals are gonna go they can go into your bloodstream so some kind of a protective glove probably something better like I've been using up to this point with the blue gloves but at this point, I've used them too many times. I don't trust them. I don't know if there's any kind of oils on them. These are brand new. Okay, and that brings up another point. You don't want to get oils into the paint from your skin or anything you're doing in the garage, especially on a surface like this that's prepped. This does have to be scuffed before it's shot. You do have X amount of window on your product before you have to paint it. Okay, I think this product was 18 hours. So for me to box in this car, fully mask it and paint it in 18 hours would be like that's like that's like a tv episode so that's never going to happen with that they recommend that the panel be scuffed they don't really get into detail on what they want you to scuff it with so we'll deal with that later the goal right now is to just get the car wet sanded okay we got some 400 we got some 600 we got a small block I got a piece of rubber hose, I got my door block, I don't know if that's 11 or 12 inches, I got my water noodle with the pipe in the center of it, I got some full sheets of 400, I got my two rolls of paper towels, first thing I'll do is put a couple sheets down on the floor because if I drop anything I want it to go onto the sheets of paper towels so I don't pick up a piece of sand with dirt from the floor and put a gouge across the panel, then you're screwed. I got my Mike and Ike's, so I know I'm going to get hungry. So, with that, I'm going to get situated, and we'll start wet sanding. Usually I keep the radio at a decent volume in here, but unfortunately I can't do that and talk. Okay, to me, the number one question before you start this is how far do you go? You have to determine what you're doing here. Okay, if this is just a car, like my Corolla out there, I did some body work, and I'll give it a quick block once, you know what I mean, then maybe recode it and maybe give it a quick block with a small little block or something like that, 
okay, because you're not really concerned about a little whoop here or a little whoop there or whatever it is. You trying to knock down the peel, that's one thing. If you're looking for a decently flat panel, you have to decide how many decide how many times you want to block this. Okay, and like I explained to Ruben, the second I put a block to this panel, the low spot's going to be different than if I sanded it by hand or with a tiny block. And the difference is, is when I come across, if I have a low spot here, it's now going to have a sharp edge around it. And it's going to look like a softball hit. For argument's sake, we'll just say it's a circle. Just for conversation. And it could be minute. I mean, it could just be under the surface, like it's almost ready to be sanded. But you got to know when to stop sanding what's around it. When you s continually sand and all your guide coat disappears and you got that circle, that's when you stop. You could sand that circle out, never break through around it, but the rest of your panel won't be flat. And the reason it won't be flat is because you won't know how flat it is as you're doing it because the guide coat's long gone. So as you're doing the work, you pass the guide coat stage. Now from there on, you don't know what you're doing. You could be standing up to this point and making a low spot next to here. All the guide coat's gone. You have no clue. But yet that circle, inside that circle, now has a hard line, in a way, and has a textured surface. As opposed to if it's just a common paint job, like on my Corolla out there, if you went in there with a smaller block or by hand, you would actually go into that low area and that low area, which you'll see as a wave, okay, will have a smooth transition. The paint in the center won't have an orange peel to it, and it'll, you'll be dipping in and out, okay? If you ever watch somebody that goes for the all-out ultimate paint job, or the professionals, they'll block it. They know right away when they see that low spot, they don't need to go any further. It's useless. So they'll continue on, go back, recoat the panel, and start to fill it in. Depending on how deep it is, they, they know. If they're professional, they know when they come across. And like I said to Ruben, when I come across with this block, you pretty much know in, in two passes, depending on how much peel you have in it, you'll know in two passes if there's an area in there that you are not going to be able to get. Because there's a big difference between a low spot and a low spot. <laughs> okay? So, to me, that is the key question. You stop sanding when the surrounding area guide coat is gone. And like I said, you can continue on, but you have to make the determination on how you want the panel to look. If you continue on, you will have ripples in the paint. There's a very good chance of it. Don't mean there will be, but you could have ripples in the paint, but the low spot will be gone. Or at that point, you recoat the panel when you're done sanding the panel block it again and then that low spot will be filled in hopefully if it isn't filled in by then then there might be a big floor in the bodywork okay to me that is a key question I don't know if you guys could see you could see the speckles there you go like I said the room too to add to the orange peel you're actually feeling the speckles and I learned too that when you guide coat the car and then look down the car the heavy and light spots look like waves in the car until you sand it off. So no, don't ever guide coat it, then look down the panel. So, with that, I'm going to try and prop you over. I can't find the tripod again. And I'm going to try and prop you up and we'll get a little sanding done. So just the basics, we don't have to go all the way. I think he'll get the idea. So I don't think this is all going to be in one video either, guys. But let's see what we got.